Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Din Bandhu Shah. I am the president of Westchester Music of India Group. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to our ninth performance. Our all-volunteer organization is dedicated to creating an environment for amateur local performers to express their musical ability in public. Our focus is on melding East-West musical cultures. I'm delighted to welcome you all to celebrate India's 75th anniversary of independence, which today's theme is Joy and Brotherhood. Our performance transcends graphical and cultural boundaries to celebrate the universal value of brotherhood through music. We are grateful to the New York State Council on the Art for the generous grant without which this concert would not have been possible. We also want to extend our thanks to our community members, sponsors, advertisers, and donors as listed in the brochure for their support in making this event a success. And of course, all of you who have come here far and near to be part of this celebration. I'm also very grateful to the Yonkers Philharmonic, Hudson Chorale, and Westchester Music Society, and other chorale groups from across Westchester in partnering with us for this historic and unique performance. I'm also grateful to over 70 volunteer singers who are instrumental in making this performance possible. Your support encourages us to continue on our cross-cultural journey in bringing us closer together through music. We hope you enjoy this unique and memorable concert celebrating brotherhood through the power of music. Finally, I would like to introduce Sharad Darbar, who will take you through the tonight evening's program. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, too, would like to welcome you to this historic performance celebrating India's 75th birthday. Can somebody turn that off? Before we begin, I have to do my duty and remind you to switch off your cell phones. Do it now. <laughs> Please refrain from any kind of audio or video recording. It disrupts the focus of your neighbors, and it distracts performers. Thank you. Until 1947, for thousands of years, India had existed as a vast region of South Asia. It was a region dotted with many kingdoms, large and small, which were ruled by very rich Maharajas. The tales of that wealth traveled to other countries. Starting around year 1000, the region began to attract periodic raids from Northwest, Afghans, Persians, Mughals, followed one another conquering increasingly larger areas of India. Inevitably, Europeans began to show up in the Mughal codes as traders. In early, early 1600s, the English East India Company set up shop in Kolkata, Kolkata as it is called, 
and over time controlled not just trade, not just trade, but local politics by raising its own army. Ultimately, it became the instrument of British occupation in India. In 1876, America celebrated 100 years as an independent former British colony, and India became the jewel in the British crown by a proclamation of Queen Victoria. Naturally, this led to increased skirmishes, demonstrations, non-cooperation movements led by Mahatma Gandhi, and other forms of resistance all over India. All this culminated in August 1947, as India became a sovereign nation for the first time in history. Here's a question for you. How many of you, and I'm gonna be able to see you now, how many of you have attended a function celebrating 75th anniversary of anything and met someone there who had been an eyewitness to that event 75 years earlier? We are lucky. We have four people present here today who witnessed the events of August 15, 1947. They witnessed it with their very own eyes. I'm sorry, if somebody can do something about this. They were the eyewitness to history in making that beautiful morning. One more person who refuses to be called Dr. Lal and wants his authentic Indian name, Bishambar Lal, is right here with us. Bishambar Lal joined Boston University in 1956 and has been a professor of neurophysiology at various American universities. On August 15, 1947, as a 15 year old young man, he was standing outside the Parliament House, experiencing the feeling of that moment. He has traveled all the way from Baltimore to help us see through his eyes the events of that fateful day. Bishambar Lal. Thank you very much. This is very. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much and appreciate this opportunity that at age 91 I can stand and say a few words. I thank all the people who have been involved for this occasion. Their number and their names are far more than I can have time to give. But I thank you, everyone, greatly. In August 
1947, I was 15 years old. And only a few weeks earlier, I had been enrolled in Hindu College of Delhi University as a pre-med student. I was a pre-med because my mother insisted that I have to be a physician <laughs> because she was a very sickly lady. And as a, the firstborn, I ended up nursing my three sisters. So I could see that why she wanted me to be a doctor for the rest of my life. But the story stops there. I did finish my pre-med, but my heart was not there. So it continued at Hindu College. It was one of the great occasions in my life. It changed me as never before. I saw those who had struggled for independence. They gave their life. They were in jail. Those were my teachers in Hindu college. They were not Western clothes, but Khadi. That, uh, I was new to that. Very new. Something changed in me. I was so proud of India and to be son of India that even till today I have only that passport which I go around the world. I never wanted an American passport and never will have it. I'm a son of India. The great historical, religious, spiritual, philosophical traditions we have in India have been guiding the world for centuries. They walk different parts of the world wearing saffron garments, taking Buddha Dharma so the rest of the world can live in peace. and live with ahimsa, non-violence. This is the dharma we transport to the world. As, God, as Dalai Lama says, my religion is kindness. Can you imagine kindness is the religion? That is what I'm proud of India. On the morning of the August 15th, before eight o'clock, I joined the crowd around India Gate and stood in front of the Parliament House. I remember that day when the new national flag the Thiringa was flying over the Parliament House because midnight India was became a free nation. And Thiringa was 
on the parliament house. That night, Pandit Nehru became the first Prime Minister of India. And with 15 and a half years old, eyes I was looking at the change which was coming. I waited and waited. And then, around 9 o'clock, the excitement was just so much because hundreds and hundreds of people were there of all ages with their tiranga or the Indian flag with them. Still in the morning of 15th, two Union Jacks were still on the either side of the Rajput on the buildings. The, then, after nine o'clock, we saw that two Union Jack slowly coming down. And at that moment stood, came up the two Tirangas. And the whole crowd was jubilant as ever. Free, we were free, we were free. It was a great moment for me to see, to be there. We waited in anticipation, and that anticipation turned that Mountbatten and Lady Mountbatten came down in Rajput in a horse, four-horse carriage. And in that sitting was Prime Minister Nehru. They were escorting him to the Red Fort to tell the nation at 10 o'clock, India is free. I stood there, the greatest moment in my life. And you may ask why Mountbatten escorted, because about nine o'clock, Mountbatten took, signed this oath as the first governor general of free India. This is what I have to say. Bhaiyo, Bhaiyo, you are free, but the responsibility of freedom is hard. And you have to give, serve the world with all you have, both national and in, so the world community will have harmony, love. Thank you very much, and God bless you all. Jai Hind! Jai Hind! Thank you. If that's the emotion of one man on that day, can you imagine what it was across that continent? Thank you, Pishambar Lalji. For a moment, I too felt I was watching that event with my own eyes. I have goose pimples going down my back. Our concert today is celebrating India 
and other Southeast, South Asian nations that found freedom from colonial rules 75 years ago. On that night in 1947, as the Union Jack came down, everyone across the continent experienced the same joyous emotion that you just saw. The end of colonial rule on that fateful day has affected in today's number over 1.8 billion people of our planet. Collectively, these people of South Asian continent continue to share a common overlapping history, culture, cuisine, music, mythology, aspirations, and brotherhood. For many of us, another thread of brotherhood got established when we landed in America. Through the presentation of joy and brotherhood today, we are sending a message of brotherhood between those of us from Indian subcontinent and all people of our adopted country, USA, the true beacon of freedom all over the world. As our president, Deen Bandhu Shah, said earlier, a few minutes ago, our concert today is a cross-cultural celebration of this brotherhood through the common language of music. It has three parts. The first part is songs about our motherland and our heritage. The second part is a tapestry woven by Eastern and Western musical traditions inspired by late Ravi Shankar. Some of you in the audience may not be familiar with the third part, which is one of the most revered Western classical pieces, Ode to Joy, from Beethoven's Symphony No. 9. This composition is generally always sung in original German language. But today, today, it will be sung for the very first time anywhere in the world in Hindi. I didn't do it. It was specifically translated to Hindi for this very special anniversary program, and you will find out by who. I want you to remember, you are the lucky audience who one day will be able to tell your children or grandchildren that you were there just like Bishambar Lal was there, Anirudh was there, Nirmalji was there, Rajkumari ji was there when the history was made. Two histories are being made today. Now imagine in that mind's eye that moment when the Union Jack came down and the tricolor Indian flag was being raised that beautiful morning. Close your eyes.
वतन तेज कदम तेज कदम हो फिर तुझसे मिलाए वो कदम जिसमे कदम हो वतन तेज कदम की रफ्तार से आगे सूरज की किरण हमसे ना पहले कभी जागे कुत के अकुवत के जो मजबूत हो धागे टूटी न कभी अजम ना हिम्मत कभी कम हो फिर तुझसे मिलाए वो कदम तुझसे मिलाए वो कदम जिसमें के दम हो चाहे वो दुनिया में कहीं हो मिलत की वो वो हम यकी हो अल्लाह पे नबी पे उसे ईमान हो यकी हो
उस नजर को झुका के ही दम लेंगे हम
रतन आबाद रहे तू आबाद रहे Our next song gives voice to woman's right and aspiration to live a free and independent existence. 75 years later, women are still not truly independent in many segments of the society. The struggle continues all over the world. No independence is complete if one section of the society is subservient to another. The journey for women to be heard still continues today. This next song is a shout out to all those women 
who fight to make their voices heard and want to live a fearless existence. Bake off, fearless. It is also a shout out to organizations like Awake, Westchester, and similar organizations all over the world helping women find that freedom from oppression and violence. They call. तुमको देते कभी जो बरसे पानी 
कभी नए पैकेट में बेचे तुमको चीज पुरानी सच्चाई है थोड़ी बेईमानी फिर भी दिल है हिंदुस्तानी 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 और सपने दोनों ही अपने हैं में कुछ आंसू है कुछ सपने हैं और सपने दोनों ही अपने हैं दिल दुखा है लेकिन टूटा तो नहीं है उम्मीद का दामन छूटा तो नहीं है हम लोगों को समझ सको तो समझो दिल पर जाने थोड़ी तू तू मैं मैं है और थोड़ी की जाता नहीं हम में काफी बातें हैं जो लगती है दीवानी Yeah. 
The theme of our performance today, Joy and Brotherhood, is actually borrowed from a poem published in Germany in 1785 by Frederick Schiller. The poem proposes and celebrates the idea of equality of all human beings under the banner of joy. Beethoven himself subscribed to such ideas and set the poem to music as a part of his symphony number no. nine, which was forced performed in May 7, 1824. That turned out to be a historic day, although it didn't seem like that at that time. Since then, this work has grown to be one of the most glorious works in Western music. The fourth part of the symphony, where Ode to Joy is located, is loved and performed in every corner of the world. Now, 199 years later, for the first time, this glorious Ode to Joy is about to be performed in Hindi. Two years ago, it was just a thought in Avilal's mind. Avi is the artistic director of Music of India Group. I'd like Avi, I'd like to invite Avi to tell us how the idea traveled from his mind to this stage. I better not question. I've been ordered to tell you how Ode to Joy in Hindi came about. Uh, higher, higher, higher. How about raising the mic higher? Or well, maybe I can grow taller? Yes. Thank you. So the last performance on stage of the Westchester Music of India group was about three and a half years ago, and because of COVID, we had been dormant like most other ensembles and musical groups. Can you hear me? <laughs> Wonderful. So as I said, it was three and a half years ago, and we were dormant. But as uh, the uh, pandemic was coming down, the thought crossed my mind, uh, what, what, we, what are we going to do for our next performance whenever that happens? And then I also was aware that India's 75th anniversary was also approaching. So we normally do Bollywood songs, and of course we were going to do Bollywood songs that uh, were nationalistic and, and joyous and all of that. But that was not enough. I, I thought we should do something more, something more special than that. And that's where the Ravi Shankar pieces came into the picture. But I was surprised because it was all uh, Indian. I wanted to do something that went beyond the borders. And it just crossed my mind that after the independence, of course, there are different countries out of one land mass, and peoples in those countries are still connected with each other. They still have relatives, and in a way, to make a long story short, there is a sense of brotherhood. And that uh, kind of led me to Beethoven, uh, and initially I thought that's outlandish, but then I said, why not? Ode to Joy is all about joy and brotherhood. And that is where, as you were just recently told, that is where the theme of our program came from. The only question was, Ode to Joy, I have always heard it sung in German. And it did not make any sense for me to sing in German. 
it had to be in Hindi. So I set about translating it into Hindi. Um, after struggling for about a month and a half, I was able to finish perhaps the first paragraph. <laughs> it was tough going. Um, you very well know, you've heard I'm sure, that it takes a whole village to raise a child. The child, of course, I'm talking about is owed to joy in Hindi. Many people were involved in this and from various directions in various capacities. I'd like, to, I'd like you to meet some of them. First of all, so when this idea came to my mind and, and I started translating and it became clear that, hmm, perhaps it can be done, but who's going to do it? Who's going to perform it? So I approached the then conductor of this wonderful Yonkers Philharmonic Orchestra, um, Maestra Tong Chen. Tong was born and brought up in Shanghai, educated musically at Peabody in Baltimore, and then ended up as the conductor of this orchestra. So I approached her, and I presented the idea to her, and she was excited about it, and she said, oh my goodness, that's a fantastic idea. You should absolutely proceed with it. Had she said, meh, no, not quite. I would have dropped the ball there and there. She is the first person I owe my gratitude to for encouraging me. And then she not only encouraged me, but she made an opportunity for me to meet the officials of Yonkers Philharmonic. And I'd like you to meet, uh, I'm not sure where Vicky is right now. Uh, where, Vicky, where are you? There, turn around, face the, face the music. <laughs> Vicky is the president of Yonkers Philharmonic, and Anne, who is playing the viola. Where are you, Anne? Would you please? She is the treasurer. So these two wonderful ladies um, discuss this idea, and, and you know, as you can imagine, there's a lot of back and forth, and. Uh, but it appeared that, that we could have an orchestra, but who's going to sing it? Because it is a tough music and it requires ability to read Western music notation. And after searching here and there and everywhere, we came across a wonderful lady called Laura Durkin. Laura Durkin, unfortunately, is not here tonight. She is traveling in Europe, but she is the president of Hudson Chorale. And many people behind me are from Hudson Choral, as well as Westchester Choral Society and many other ensembles. Uh, I believe some even came from Manhattan to join this ad hoc, uh, spontaneous chorus. But the amazing thing is they agreed to sing in Hindi, a language that their ears have probably never heard. They are brave people. David, where are you? Would you please rise? Would you please rise? David and Will, is Will here? He's not. David trained the chorus to sing this in Hindi. How about that? And I, I know uh, I'm taking so much time, but please forgive me because I have to follow orders. Um, well, I'm, okay, um, I was told that I should at least read part of the Hindi translation, so I am going to obey my, my orders. O dosto, nahi ab ye shor, gai hum sab aaj milkar khushi ke geet, aur raag ho jashan ki. Khushi, khushi. Khushi kudrat ki chingari dukhtare elysium. Aye hai aaj dar pe tere dil mein aag leke hum. Tere jadu se jurte hai saare tute rishte aaj. Sab insaan bante dost tere paazuon ke saaye mein aaj. 
जिसने की है उम्र भर की दोस्ती वो खुशी से गाए जिसको मिला उम्र भर का साथी वो खुशी से गाए जिसके पास हो एक ही दोस्त वो भी हमारे संग गाए वो जो दोस्ती नहीं जानते हमसे दूर जाकर रोए सभी पीते मसरत की मैं कुदरत की ही बाहों में नेक हो या ना हो नेक सब जाते उसी रास्ते उल्फत भी और मैं भी दी है उम्र भर की दोस्ती में परवाने को जोश मिला है और फरिश्ते को खुदा गले मिलो एक दूसरे से उल्फत है सबके लिए many people have helped in bringing an idea that was simply a thought in my mind 2 years ago to this many people along the way but the one person that i absolutely have to mention at the cost of possibly my life after this <laughs> is sharad dabral you met her i I, 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 I don't know if I can tell you she did this or that or that because I don't know. She did so many different things. Without that, this would not have been possible. Thank you, Sharad. And now, I want to present to you a friend, Carl Bettendorf. Carl was born and brought up in Hamburg, Germany. Now makes his home in New York. He's a composer and conductor. Carl, perhaps because he is a countryman of Beethoven, understands certain inner workings of this piece so well, and he explained them to me. He taught me many things. I was just completely floored. I was so floored that I realized. Carl knows so much about this piece and he is the right person to run the final mile of this project. Carl go.